All right, I want you to consider this. In Matthew 24, uh, Jesus is asked, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And then uh, he explains all these things. And I want you to pay particular attention. Make a note of verse 21. Jesus says, For then shall be great tribulation. All right, and then now go down to verse 29 immediately after the tribulation what happens immediately after the tribulation that's when Jesus gathers together his elect that's when we are lifted up in the air all right, first the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So this is immediately after the tribulation. All right, in John 16, it says, In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world okay these things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace in the world ye shall have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world immediately after the tribulation he gathers together his elect and essentially destroys evil forever after we are lifted up the enemy is gathered at our feet destroyed forever no more tribulation after that is finished all right so in the world we're going to have tribulation but we have a way out of this world right we have an escape just as Moses led his people out of Egypt. He gave them an escape. So also will God give us an escape out of this wicked world. Now, this is after the tribulation. Doesn't make any sense to me for people to say, we are taken out of this wicked world and then there's tribulation tribulation for who not for us you're talking about the wrath of God that is being poured upon the people if you want to call it tribulation okay but it, that's not the word used at all in the Bible ever in reference to the wrath of God it's not anywhere at all never mentioned never suggested as tribulation for them it's going to be a little more than tribulation guarantee it but I just want to point that out immediately after the tribulation it's not before the tribulation I mean, wh what is this that are, people are teaching oh don't worry you're not gonna have any trials or tribulations any sort of struggles in life everything is peachy king no 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 I don't know what kind of world those people are living in that's not the world that I'm living in guarantee it immediately after the tribulation in this world you shall have tribulation after the tribulation and notice here you do a search for world tribulation you get two mentions both verses I just shared with you great tribulation and in the world you shall have tribulation all right but be of good cheer I have overcome the world and nah, that's all I want to share with you just think about it. why are people making a big deal uh, why are they even saying why even suggest that we're gonna be taken out before this great tribulation why do you equate the great tribulation with the wrath of God it's not the same it doesn't make any 
sense at all. All right, then listen. Let me make one more point. Let, let's say, let's go with your idea that we're going to be taken out before this great tribulation, which you believe is the wrath of God. Well, the problem is, if the great tribulation was the wrath of God, right? If this is the wrath of God then the wrath of God comes before Jesus appears in the clouds of heaven and therefore the wrath of God comes on earth before we are lifted up before we are gathered together you see what I'm saying here it doesn't make any sense how can you equate the great tribulation with the wrath of God. It does not make any sense. There's no way at all to argue this logically, this idea that the Great Tribulation is the wrath of God. Because here, in your scenario, the wrath of God comes before we are lifted up. You see what I'm saying? The wrath of God comes before Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. You see what I'm saying? It, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, I wonder, do people even bother to think anymore? Really? 